Hello everybody. In this video, we're going to be discussing section 11.5, columns. For our learning objectives, we're going to describe the composition and properties of colloidal dispersions, and we're going to list and explain several technological applications of colloids. So first, let's go over our vocabulary. Suspensions are heterogeneous mixtures composed of relatively large particles that are visible. They are cloudy, and these particles will settle out after mixing. So you can think of something like um, mud, or if I let some time pass, eventually those solid dirt particles are going to settle out. Colloids, however, have intermediate properties between suspensions and solutions. So when we had solutions, we had everything dispersed at the molecular level, Right, so that we had individual molecules being suspended in that, or being solvated in there. When we have suspensions, we have large particles that are being suspended, but as there is some intermediate where the particles are larger than most molecules, but smaller than a suspension particle. And what's going to happen is we're going to have a stable condition where those particles do not settle out upon standing but they are not true solutions. So if we look at some examples here with some pictures, this is helpful. When we have individual uh, ions, for instance, like in our salt water, where they're all well separated and stuff, we have a true solution. Milk would be an example of a colloid where we have small particles that are all separated whereas mud is a suspension where those particles are quite large and will eventually settle out. So colloids have uh, a property known as the Tyndall effect. And what this is is that the particles in a colloid, they're large enough to scatter light. Um, and a good example of that is actually clouds. So clouds are actually a colloid. And just like we talked about in uh, with solutions, right? Um, we can have uh, colloids that are in any different kind of phase. So these light beams that are coming up out of these spotlights are being scattered by clouds, which is a distribution of water particles in the air that do not settle out yet, right? Um, eventually they could as those particles aggregate and we call that rain but when they're just suspended there and they're not coming out yet that is a colloidal mi solution a colloidal mixture all right so let's go over a few facts about colloids the particles that make up colloids can be hundreds or thousands of small molecules or sink extremely large molecules and this is particularly true when we start talking about biology and biochemistry uh, we're made out of all of these really large like polymer uh, molecules so uh, solution uh, proteins and fats and stuff these can be uh, colloids sometimes components of a colloid as we said can be any phase and just like we had the solvent solute um, convention when we're talking about solutions we have something similar for colloids so the particle component present in relatively small amounts is called the dispersed phase so this would be like the colloid uh, equivalent of a solute in the substance or solution the particle is dispersed in is called the dispersion medium so this would be like the colloid equivalent of the solvent right and as I mentioned before, if the particles aggregate, they can break the colloid, meaning that they're going to then form a suspension, just like when those uh, particles of water and a cloud aggregate together and form little droplets and eventually come down as rain. So here are some common examples. Um, we can have a solid in a gas, and this would be like smoke or dust, right? We could have a solid in a liquid, um, and we've seen a lot of examples of this. Milk, milk and magnesia, a lot of paints are like that, some inks. Uh, we could have a solid in a solid, 
So sometimes this is true for things like gems and some alloys. They're actually not true solutions, but instead they are actually colloids. Um, you can have a liquid and a gas. Um, so then we're talking about cl clouds, fogs, mists, different sprays that you may see and stuff. If you have a liquid and liquid, um, examples of that would be like milk, mayonnaise, or butter. Uh, so up here is actually milk and magnesia because that's a solid, but milk is a suspension of fat in uh, water, and so both of those are liquids. Mayonnaise is also fat in water, and so is butter. Um, you could have a liquid and a solid. This includes jellies, gels, pearls, opal, gas and liquid. So that's like a lot of foams, whipped cream, stuff like that. Um, and then you can have a gas and a solid. And you see this a lot in things like pumice or floating soaps. I don't know if you guys have seen much of this, but these are typically like really porous, really light solids that have a bunch of gas dispersed in them. Collards are typically prepared by one of two means. So it's either a dispersion method. We, we break down larger particles into smaller particles until they're small enough to be evenly dispersed and, and form a stable colloid. Or we have condensation methods where we actually take smaller units. So instead of breaking down larger particles, we're taking smaller units that could be molecules or even really, really small particles and we start to build those up until they are large enough to form a colloid. So you can go from really small and build it up till you have those tiny particles, or you could take larger particles and break them down until they're small enough. Um, so emulsions are colloids of two immiscible liquids. Um, for instance, like salad dressing, right? You shake that up until it appears as if it's a single uh, liquid and that but it would settle out eventually um, but sometimes you can get that stuff that's uh, from the store that won't actually settle out and that's a that's a stable colloid uh, this can be prepared by shaking or blending liquids um, and so in one of the liquids is going to break up and be dispersed through another uh, and sometimes these droplets will wind up coalescing and reform two, two phases. Uh, emulsifying agents can be used to stabilize emulsions. All right. um, and emulsifying agents, they just have a, a certain geometry that allows them to stabilize those droplets and keep them from aggregating together. And we're going to talk a little bit about one of those. Uh, which are soaps and detergents. So basically all soaps and detergents are what we call amphiphilic, meaning they have one end of the molecule that really likes water, and they have another end of a molecule that does not like the water. So what winds up happening is that the end that doesn't like water will all aggregate together away from the water, Okay, and it will point out the part that does like the water, the ionic end here. And what winds up happening is it starts to form a little droplet, just like this. Okay, and uh, these are called micelles. And what can wind up happening is a lot of our dirts and oils that we want, they also don't like water. And so they get trapped in the center of this micelle. And then that forms a tiny particle with our dirt molecule trapped in the center. And uh, that forms a stable colloid. And then it will you know, have a similar effect to uh, dissolving it. And then we can disperse it throughout the solution. And then we can throw that away. And we've trapped our dirt and been able to transport it someplace else. Uh, a good example of how we also use properties like this is the way that we handle smoke in a industrial setting. Okay, so that's dispersed colloidal particles. All right, and a property that these particles often have is that they're often electrically charged. So if you imagine here, 
right, with this ionic end. It could have a charge to it. And the overall particle may actually wind up having a electric charge, whereas that wouldn't be possible in, uh, in, a, um, in a typical neutral molecule that was dissolved. So they, they may be electrically charged. All right. And this is part of what help keeps them dispersed in, uh, in their dispersion medium. The charge nature of some colloidal particles may be exploited to remove them from a variety of mixtures. So that's how we typically handle smoke. Basically, the smoke uh, comes out of a industrial process of some kind, and then we apply high direct current voltage to different plates here, and those smoke particles get attracted to those plates, and they start to deposit onto the plates. Um, and uh, then they will eventually settle down, like they'll just kind of flake off as a solid eventually, and settle back down. And we're uh, effectively able to trap that smoke and release uh, soot-free gas out the other end. Uh, one last thing to talk about is a gel. So a gel is a colloidal dispersion of a liquid phase throughout a solid phase. So the classic example here would be like jello, where we have trapped water in a solid phase of pectin. So because we have enough water trapped in there, it gives it that gel uh, effect. The fibers of the dispersing medium, so the pectin in this case, form a complex three-dimensional network. And the interstices, the little spots in between those uh, fibers, are being filled with the liquid medium, in this case water. 